Okay, hello, I'm James and I'm here with Ben. Hi Ben. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we have got another couple of spoilers for you from the kind the kind heart of, of Jimmy O'Brien at WizKids. Um, without further ado, let's crack on. We talked about it on the podcast. I'll put the link in the uh, description. Uh, the first of the two, they're both on commons, and the first one is, if I get my fingers ready, it's Colossus Organic Steel. He's a five-cost fist with the X-Men affiliation. While Colossus is active, the first time one of your character dice would take damage, each turn you may have Colossus take that damage instead. And on a burst face, which is his levels two and three, instead prevent that damage. Ben, what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, we've seen similar abilities in the past, haven't we? And this is a, an okay version. I wish it said uh, damage to you or damage to any of your things yeah. uh, rather than just characters. That makes it significantly worse. <laughs> um, the idea that it prevents damage is, is okay. Reminiscent um, of golems, isn't it? Yeah, the golems, yeah. So we've got up, we've got iron golem, but most of the original golems, the clay, flesh, and iron, all have some version of this. Yeah. Um, I, it, yeah, it's an okay ability. The Colossus stats are good for a five cost. Um, we have seen cheaper Colossuses in the past, or Colossi. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, not brilliant, not awful. Um, we'll be okay in draft if there's some big, like, statted yeah. uh, overcrushes or something, but. Yeah. A little bit overshadowed by his rare, isn't he? Which is the uh, a little bit the Piotr one. Okay, so that's that's Colossus, useful in draft, which is faint praise as usual. I'm not I'm not, mm-hmm. not not convinced about his value outside of that. Um, shall we move on? Yep. Let's go through. Okay, so the next one. Let's let's get through the golem. Uh, the next one is also an uncommon, which we have actually seen in some form before. If you've got good eyes, you'll spot it on this, which was from the the, uh, WizKids online store, the promo stuff. Uh, Bottom row, you will see that there is uh, a very fuzzy image of Kitty Pride, which I magnified, but I don't unfortunately have uh, CIA technology, so (laughs) we couldn't quite work out what it said, (laughs) although it does look like while Wolverine is active. Um, And beyond that, we were not too sure. Um, mm-hmm. But now we have proof, and more interestingly, the artwork has changed entirely. Um, they've gone for a sort of, I suppose, a, a 90s vibe. Let's let's leave it at that. Um, it does say, while Wolverine is active, Kitty Pride gets plus one attack and can't be targeted by your opponent. It's a three-cost mask, also with the X-Men affiliation and her traditional dice. Ben, what do you reckon? A uh, little bit difficult to trigger, I suppose. Is the ability but once the ability is up, it's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. So the stipulation while Wolverine is active is a bit annoying. I wish that the the first part, maybe the bonus of plus one attack, was dependent on Wolverine, and the second part was not. Yeah. Uh, the fact that they both seem to be part of the Wolverine is active makes them significantly weaker, but not awful. Still, uh, can't be targeted by your opponent is very useful. Um, we've seen this in the past with. Uh, stuff like Lord, the Lord of D, um, who has their yeah, or Raven. Uh, basically, if they're targeting something, they can't be targeted, uh, and you can use a combo that's kind of been banned, I suppose, because yeah. uh, it confused so many, caused so many problems, which was the Ring of Magnetism. Uh, but if you put this Ring of Magnetism on the Kitty Pride, then basically you're forcing your opponent to target Kitty, which they can't do. So any kind of targeting fizzles yeah. uh, effectively. You're not um, you're not allowed to do that anymore in competitive play, and if you do it with your friends, then you're a jerk. So <laughs> just don't do it. It's very strong. I mean, I would recommend if you're just like getting into the game and never played that card. It is very fun to play. Well, it's fun for you to play and <laughs> just be like, yes, <laughs> can't try and do anything. Um, but no, I mean, I don't mind the plus one attack as well. It's good to make Kitty a three cost who has uh, a three four four attack line. Is not bad. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah sure. and um, you, we we did talk about this on the podcast, and you said you would find a way to make it good. So you've you've put together a team. Uh, can I show that? Yeah, I'll do good in air quotes. But yes, okay. Uh, we'll flick through Ring of Magnus again, and this is oh, go to my other scene, which is here, blank screen. Sorry, there it is. This is Ben's team in all its glory. Ben, talk us through it. Kitty Pride's up there in the top right. Yep, so we figured I couldn't do uh, any more Ring of Magnetism shenanigans because uh, that's not 
strictly legal. So I was trying to work out how else you could kind of make them um, target Kitty. Uh, so I kind of went with the, the Storm Global, which basically you can pay a mask to redirect uh, an action die mm -hmm. uh, to one of your other characters. So you can basically, if they're using an action, say they buy your Confront the Mighties uh, or Take Downs, mm -hmm. um, you can basically use Storm Global to force that action to target Kitty, which kind of fizzles, um, which Assuming is nice. Wolverine, Wolverine is out again, yeah. Assuming Wolverine is out, uh, but also the Nova Corps uniform I thought worked well um, as basically a means to prevent all damage. So I was mainly thinking about Becky uh, and protecting Kitty Pride, using Kitty Pride to negate Becky. Uh, the Nova Corps uniform basically reads the um, villain characters deal no damage to whatever it's equipped to, effectively. Mm -hmm. So you can put Nova Corps uniform on Kitty Pride. And Overcrush no longer registers. And also the Becky rolling out stuff can't do anything because Kitty Pride can't be targeted. So you, um, you'd have to you'd have to pay for your takedown global, right? Before the You need the takedown global, yeah. That's why it's before, on the team. Before damage is assigned. So you let yeah. you let Becky try and overcrush and then in the global step after blockers are assigned, you I guess block with your Nova Core uniform attached character and laugh in their face when you pay a mask. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you can do that onto Kitty Pride. But then, so I had this, uh, and I had Wolverine, obviously, I went for the cheapest Wolverine available. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I had some nice uh, utility with the makes uh, X Men free to field. Yep. Um, although we don't have that many high cost fielding uh, X Men. But anyway, so I had that kind of as a basic team um, idea, and then I thought it was kind of uh, thematic that you could have Nova Corps uniform on the. Wolverine and Kitty Pride, and you could do an X Men in space type thing. <laughs> um, so that was my theme. I was like, "Oh, we can do a themey, themey kind of thing." Um, so yeah, I had to take down. I put in the Colossus because that Colossus is pretty good. Uh, it's quite cheap as a big statted dude, yep. uh, and can give Wolverine overcrush. Uh, and then I went for just some ridiculous amounts of ramp with Beast and Professor X because <laughs> you're probably going to need a lot of ramp to be competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then I, then I added, had a couple more spaces. I wanted to make use of the takedown global, not just for the no courts uniform, but for something else. Um, mm -hmm. And decided that if they're in space, they can just run into a Martian uh, from a different <laughs> universe <laughs> completely. So Martian Manhunter gives everything overcrush if your opponent has an uh, active villain, uh, which is kind of your win condition on this team. But also makes use of the Kitty Pride plus one attack and the Wolverine stats in general. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when X-Men go into space, they uh, generally are doing it to confront the might confront the mighty. So <laughs> nice. Okay. I put that in as well. But I also figured that actually confront the mighty is a targeted action which can work with the storm. Um as is takedown as well. But you yeah. can also use the storm rare to kind of deal your opponent some damage if you just go out and damage Storm with either of those actions, They Storm redirects the first two damage to your opponent. So that's an alternate wound condition. Oh, ah, nice. Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. C, Ben can make any mediocre card. I don't know about that. It's... Look good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do so by putting Professor X on the team. <laughs> so... <laughs> that's the solution to everything. Yeah. <laughs> Stick PXG on there. But um, yeah, Kitty Pride, she's all right. And, you know, with a cheap Wolverine, there are a few also in Dark Phoenix, which are ooh, not very exciting, but there's, there's a, they are at least four costs. So that's, um, that's possible, I think, also in, in draft and in set. Um, okay, Ben, thank you very much for that. It's fantastic. Uh, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification icon if you want to see more spoilers in the future. Uh, have a lovely day. Take care and bye-bye. See ya.